Okay, before I start, I'll just quickly introduce UT Arlington. Uh, UT Arlington is actually the second large campus of UT system in between Dallas and Forbes. It's one of the uh, emerging research universities. It's printing a lot in the last five years. We have a structural lab that can do full-scale to material testing. Uh, also, UTA create a new center, material center, that led by uh, Dr. Shai. He recently moved to our university. So, okay, ideally, ideally we want to a structure member to have several functions, for example, high durability, uh, especially for those uh, structure with steel bar, because all the durability issues mostly relate to rebar, steel rebars. Uh, high sh flexural shear strength, high stiffness, high ductility, and high resilience. But however, those things typically cannot be combined, cannot happen at the same time. For example, if you have a high ductility, based on current ACI design, you have to use a tension control, which have reduced the reinforcement a lot, which means the strength will be limited. And high ductility means the rebar width will be stretched a lot, which will reduce the shear strength due to a smaller aggregate interlock, smaller compression zone. Plus resilience, by resilience I mean that once overloaded, we go back to its original deformation. Once the rebar yield, a lot of deformation crack occur, it will never go back. So those things will not happen simultaneously with current design and materials. So this research is to combine UHPFRC with those high compressive strength, high ductility, uh, cracking resistant, high shear strength, combined with FRP, which, which has a very high tensile strength and basically non-coercive uh, with the new design method combined all of them so that we can achieve all these functions at the same time for a structure member. So uh, this is the, basically the result I want to show quickly, what I meant by high stiffness. So the, the top two ones with FRP combined with UHPFRC designed by uh, the new method. You can see that the stiffness is much higher than conventional. The red one with uh, plain concrete with FRP bar it has much smaller stiffness and the strength. The black one is RC, reverse concrete design, the largest strength you can get uh, based on tension control design, ACI 318 or H2. Um, RFD. So those four sections has a, four beams have exactly the same cross section. So uh, FRP bar is several advantage. For example, very very high tensile strength, uh, basically corrosion resistant, and very lightweight. Typically, steel fibers are lighter than steel. But the problem with FRP bar is purely elastic, then brittlely ruptured, and plus it has a very small, much smaller axle stiffness. So the issue with this is that uh, because the rebar is stretched, FRP bar is stretched, so that is much larger crack width and larger shear and smaller compression zone. And this leads to less stiffness, uh, less shear strength for if you combine a plain concrete with FRP bar. So that's why ACI uh, 440 basically has a very conservative design if you combine with plain concrete with FRP bar. But in some occasion, you do have to use FRP bar because high course, coercion uh, environment. So the design was very low factor and tend to use concrete as a uh, question of concrete first before the uh, FRP bar rupture. So a quick review about, just quick review, overview of UHP, UHPFRC or UHPC. Uh, we do know that the high strength, high shear strength, high early, shear, early strength, but one of the property uh, is not discussed too much is about its high compressive ductility here. So what this means that conventionally ACI design or H2, uh, uh, H2 design will assume concrete cra uh, crushed at point zero three. That's how we design concrete member using plain section member plan. So if you increase rebar, number of rebar, this is how the section change, right? Because compression increases and the deformation of rebar reduces. So increased number of rebar will not increase too much of the flexure strength because the, rib, the rebar will not be developed. And the curvature reduced. The cur by curvature, I mean this one. The ductile curvature actually reduced. So on the other hand, for UHPFRC, so we can have a UHPFRC that's very, very ductile and compressive strength, compressive uh, ductility. Compare these two curves. The red one, as I cannot see very well here, is plain concrete crushed at the point zero three. UHPFRC here is about 
but it's very similar, similar definition. I can have five times more ductile before it crushed. So this is verified by, uh, th the first one is from material testing. The second one, this is verified by a bin testing. We use the DIC, high resolution DIC to see the, uh, the, the strength at ultimate. So these three curves compare the strength across the beam. The first one is plain concrete. This is a typical ACFRC of uh, steel fiber concrete. This is a huge PC. And two features here. One, you can see the plain section of the plain still, still split for all these three beams. The third is that for plain concrete, an ultimate crush at the 0.03 is pretty much close to what ACI Ashto assumed. ACFRC uh, crush about 0.06 or 7. UHPC, 0 0.015, that's five times larger. So uh, from other testing, you can see that plain concrete crush easily by UHPC, basically at, even you go beyond peak strength, you can maintain its, uh, the shape because of ductility, compressive ductility. And this is the one that full-scale column testing with previously the NSF Sound Foundation supported. And full-scale testing for, our, uh, for columns one of the columns we use UHPC, you can see that it's quite resilient. It cannot be crushed with high ductility, even under very large uh, drift. So we start in mind, so how would we utilize UHPC's strength and deformation capacity to design structural membranes? So the first, the first one on here is what can see the high strength from 5 KSI to, to 20 KSI. Naturally, the neutral axis reduces, and the plane section and plane remains, you can see that the ductility of the bar increases a lot. The curvature also increases, simply because of strength itself. And the second graph is about the compressive strength, 0 0.015, 5, five times larger, also increase a lot of the deformation of the bar and the curvature. If you combine both of them, that leads to the last one, extremely large deformation of the bar. So this gives you an uh, idea that now I can add a lot of rebar there, still ductile, very ductile, because of the ductility of concrete. So high amount of rebar also help to pulling the structure back into shape once it's overloaded. So this is, we developed a new design method we call uh, ductile concrete, strong reinforcement concept, DCSR. And this is opposite to the current design method. The current design method where you use concrete as a brittle materials steel as ductile materials. But this method we use, concrete as a ductile uh, uh, element. The rebar FRP bar is the elastic one, remain elastic, it's opposite design concept. So what's the feature of this method? First, uh, if we use high reinforcement ratio of uh, high strength FRP bar, and we can achieve very high strength, very high strength beam with the same cross section, small cross section we can get very high strength. The second is that, um, because we remain, the rebar remain elastic, so there's no, almost no deterioration of bond strength. So no deterioration of, uh, uh, there's, the crack will be very small because the rebar won't be stretched too much. So that can maintain the shear strength and overall stiffness of the, the member because of small cracking. Also provide very strong restoring force uh, for residual deformation, which means self-centering capacity. Um, of course, each is very high, it's, it still has very high shear strength, we can reduce the reinforcement. So this is the fourth space we design based on the new concept. Uh, well, two of them. So the first one and on the top left is the RC design, RC section. That's the maximum strength we can design based on ACM Ashto, the upper limit of tension control. And on the right one is with FRP design based on ACI 440. So with FRP bar and uh, concrete will crush first. The lower two one on the left, it's usually FRC with FRP, uh, basalt fiber, FRP bar. So this one, we didn't use any shear reinforcement just to test how far it can go. Uh, on the right, lower one is with much higher strength with BFR, uh, BFRP bar and design based on the, the new concept. So this is overview of the spacemen. The last two, uh, the upper ones without shear enforcement, the lower one was uh, large quantity, about 14%, I remember correctly, a BFRP bar. So this is the result you see already, that conventional plain concrete with BFRP bar and very small stiffness and lower strength. 
And the black one is the RC with the steel bar, black bar. Uh, the green one is the, the one huge PFRC plus AFRP bar without shear enforcement. Steel is high ductility, you can see that, and high strength and high stiffness. The last one, the blue one, is the one with a uh, very high amount of enforcement. So uh, a quick view about the, the damage, you see this already, that damage of uh, the beam with plain concrete plus AFRP bar, very large shear crack, crushing of uh, spoiling of the compression zone. Um, RC one here, same, same thing here, spoiling, crushing concrete. For BFA, BFA, BFRP plus huge PFRC, this is the one goes very large deformation. So you can see that not many, almost no shear cracking here, very, very small crack width, because the design concept, is a concept we use larger amount of rebar, so rebar remain elastic, so no, no opening of the cracks. And the concrete gradually, gradually, eventually crushed, but no spoiling at all. So extending this concept to a earthquake resistant, we test a few spacemen on the large uh, refer, uh, specimen reversal. Now I'm gonna show two spacemen here. Uh, the two spacemen have different fibers. One is the steel fiber, so it's the micro steel fiber, high strength steel fiber. One is the high, high performance P fiber. It also has a very high tensile strength. Uh, this overview of the spacemen uh, under this, this kind of cyclic loading. So uh, the loop shows two features. One, on the left side is USB FRC with uh, P fiber. I write the ones with steel fiber. Two features here. One, and both of them show the high ductility to very large drift ratio and no drop in strength. Second is that is go back to, there's a safe centering. You go back to kind of the original deformation because FRP bar pulls back to its original shape. So it's called self centering. It's more resilient uh, features here. Okay, this is a kind of comparison of the crack up to very large drift ratio. Uh, first, you know, you won't see steel cracking here. And concrete remain its shape, no spoiling, gradually crushed, of course, but no large crack with no shear damage. So this basically shows some stringage data. In general, all this, the steel along the, the steel, but sorry, not steel, FRP bar, the rebar remain elastic in most of the cases. Okay, to summarize, uh, this study we use the fully utilized the feature of the HBFRC with the high strength, high compressive strength, plus high compressive strength as a as critical factor here. And high cracking resistance, high shear strength, combined FRP bar, high tensile strength. So we can achieve simple functions simultaneously for structure members. So first, uh, high durability. Uh, this is coming come from the nature, the nature of the material itself, HP FRC plus AFRP. And the high flexure shear strength is through the DCSR design concept. High stiffness through the DCSR design, and high ductility through DCSR design. Just remind you that FRP bar is brittle, but we still can get a high ductility even under cyclic loading. So high resilience, uh, you can see, you, you saw that already, that goes back to its original shape. So those, all the function can be achieved simultaneously by using this uh, design, new design concept, plus fully utilize the property of the two uh, new materials. Okay, this concludes my presentation, thank you. I start with one, uh, so you lie under the ductility of the UHPC and compression. Um, does this mainly rely on the fiber reinforcement? And then if this is the case, <clears throat> does the fiber orientation play a role? Okay, very good question. The question is about the compressive ductility is coming from the fiber itself. It, it is, it is. So uh, from our study, up to about 3%, we use up to 3% full-scale column of this, we use steel fiber up to 3%, the uh, PE fiber up to about 0.75%. So once we reach this amount, this comes from, the, the ductility comes. So orientation, of course, will be important. At least so far we have the mixing, we don't see much effect of different orientations. I haven't looked into the detail if orientation is good or bad, but overall, we, we already got this result. If you have a cylinder and all the fibers are vertical, like lift the load, <laughs> it would probably be brittle, right? You know, like this, all the fibers only in this mm -hmm. Now, are you concerned in the beams when you pass this? 
the very top layer where we have your wall effect. The fibers can only be that. It's impossible, right? Mm -hmm. That's the delamination of yours. Well, as so, uh, so for our experiences, we cast the beams like a regular way to cast it, you know, going up. Yeah. So, the, and on the top, there's just what you see. The tool is there with measure okay. DIC. So, I guess we had looked into that, you see, as an initial dimension. But at least from all our testing, several beams, many beams we test so far, we haven't observed those behaviors. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. And that's one more good. Thank you. Uh, Okay, if the question is that steel bar give you a warning sign, right? Warning sign for failure. But in ACI, the only thing ACI says is that it's deformation, cracking deformation. You see a lot of deformation, that's the time to run away. The same thing here. The same thing for the beam we tested, you see the very large deformation, right? Very large deformation. You see the beam bend a lot. It bend a lot. But once you reload, it goes back, and that's it. But you see the warning sign there. You see the wall cracked. It's still the same thing. Okay, thank you.